Hey, I think I'm live. <laughs> hey, you guys. Can you guys see me and hear me? We're in the yellow, of course, but it's all good. Let me refresh my page. Let's see here. Um, thank you, Keisha Anderson, for the super sticker. I appreciate it. Thank you, sis. Oh, let's see. Am I still on? Okay, you guys can see me? Okay. It's like the stream is acting a little bit funny. Okay, there I go. There I go. There I is. Hey, hey. <laughs> okay, I can see myself. <laughs> I was confused at first. Like, what the hell is going on? Anyways, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good. Happy Friday. Honey, it's been a long week. It's been a really long week. I just been laying low, sipping my tea, talking to like-minded people, exercising, and, you know, just staying busy. So I hope you guys are doing good as well, preserving your energy. 2020 is crazy, okay? 2020 is insane right now with all the stuff that's going on um, in the real world and in the celebrity world. Hey, everybody. So we have about 900 people watching. Let's wait till we get to at least 1,000. Let me read this super chat. David Caramello sent $9.99. He says, hey, auntie. Hey, David. Thank you so much for the super chat, and thanks for coming through today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Aisha Mohammed um, sent $10 from Canada. She says, hey, sis, you have been saying my name wrong. It's Aisha. Oh, oh, hold on. It's Asia, not Asia. Oh, okay. Asia. Asia. Thank you. Just stopping by to say, hey, I have an exam. Wish me extra luck. Good luck to you, and thank you for telling me how to pronounce your name. I appreciate it, sis. Thank you for coming through. Um, let's see here. Kierka Kendrick says, hey, auntie, just got off work and jump right on. You look beautiful. Thank you so much, sis. You look beautiful as well. Thank you for joining me this evening. I really appreciate it. Um, we got a lot of, oh shit, we done jumped up to 4,500 people in less than five minutes. Okay, great. And we're in the green right now. So that's good. Um, Munchkin07, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, Latu Wana Jalantan, hopefully I pronounced that right. I like the name though, Latu, that's pretty. Um, says, I don't support Nick after his colorist comments on black women. We're going to talk about Nick, sis. Hold tight. We're definitely going to go there. Um, Nikki Red sent $5. She says, thank you for being you and everything you do. I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much, and thanks for joining me today. I appreciate you being here. Um, $3 wig from Walgreens. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that name. $3 wig from Walgreens sent $5. She said, I finally caught a live. Love you, and thank you for always keeping it real. Love you, too, and thank you for coming through. I really appreciate it. Oh, shit, we got a big one. We got a big one. Hey, hey. <laughs> Maya sent $100. Thank you so much, Maya. She says, love you, T. I love you, too, sis. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Righteous, righteous B-Girl sent $49.99. Hey, hey. <laughs> Since I can't twerk, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, says, I finally caught your live. Love you, T. Love you, too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. So much love. People coming through. We got over 6,000 people in here. Um, Naptual Yamin says, hours before Tamar's incident, we TV posted a video with the title, Get Your Life Tamar, meant to send a screenshot. Yes, I did watch that. And we're going to talk about it. So let's go ahead and get this show started. We got over 6,000 people in here. Sorry if I can't get to everybody's super chats, but thank you guys so much for the support. It means a lot to me. It really does. So, um... I want to start the show by saying this because I know a lot of people have been asking me about a fellow YouTuber. Now, I, I don't I didn't know her. I didn't watch her content. I didn't hear of her until she passed away. Um, but she is from the UK and she was pregnant. Um, she had been sharing her, I guess, her pregnancy journey with her audience. Her name was um, Nicole Thea. And so basically... It had came out last week that her and her baby died. And so I thought that was kind of odd because I'm like, okay, she's about eight months pregnant. And a lot of times babies can survive on their own. Um, you know, even at eight months pregnant, I've known people who've gotten into labor at six months pregnant. And those babies were able to be saved. 
So I didn't want to speak on anything until more information came out. And so today the information has come out on her death. So I want to go ahead and play you guys the video really quick. Um, because we, we talked about this a few streams ago. And this is real. You know, and it's the whole situation is just really disheartening. I had posted on this on Instagram this morning that the girl was saying that she felt a lot of chest pain. She couldn't breathe. And she was reaching out to her midwife. And her midwife was telling her, oh, well, you got a baby growing inside of you. You know, um, that's just part of the process. Um, not being able to breathe is not part of the process just because you're pregnant. And they basically kind of dismissed, you know, her ailments. And now it's coming out that she had a heart attack. So I want you guys to watch this really quick, um, this short snippet. Let me go ahead and get it set up here. Give me just a second. This whole situation is just really sad all the way around. Show you on my display here. Okay. The YouTube community is mourning the loss of Nicole Thea. The social media star who was eight months pregnant and expecting a baby boy has died at the age of 24 on Saturday. Her unborn son, who she planned to name Rain, tragically passed away as well. Nicole's family confirmed the heartbreaking news on our Instagram writing, as a family, we ask that you give us privacy because our hearts are truly broken and we are struggling to cope with what has happened. According to the Daily Mail, her family believes she died due to a massive heart attack. They said she had it in her house when she started to feel chest and back pains. She was a dancer and we don't think she had any underlying health problems. However, they won't know for sure until they receive the postmortem. Mm, Nicole, a London-based YouTube personality, was a dancer and accessories designer but she was best known for posting videos documenting her pregnancy. Today, I just thought, let me just quickly film the BTS of my second spontaneous, what's this called? Oh, being her maternity shoot she did with her friends. Thanks to my lovely team! Peace! Nicole, who has more than 240,000 followers on Instagram, announced her pregnancy in April, writing, God gave us the biggest blessing yet. I'm finally creating a beautiful little human inside of me. We are already obsessed with you, our little miracle baby. Thank you for choosing us to be your parents and best friends. I just can't wait to see Leo Man. I'm going to be busy um, holding the baby's cheek, doing this, <laughs> doing his hair like this. Nicole's boyfriend shared his excitement about becoming a dad, writing, I can't wait to be taking my son to the parks and playground. He's done so much for me, like, without him, I don't know how I would get through this. Even with Nicole's tragic death, fans will be able to see new content from the vlogger. She had pre-scheduled YouTube videos to upload to her channel, and with her boyfriend's blessing, he made the decision to allow them to be aired. And guys, we love you guys so much. Okay, it's hard to watch that. Let me go ahead and show you guys this really quick, what I posted this morning this was a snippet that somebody sent me of her so give me just a second to play this for you guys worst thing the worst thing about my pregnancy the worst this is the worst thing yet i am so out of breath 24 7 you guys think oh my days how is she so active da -da 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 -da. first of all another thing people need to stop comparing me to other people i'm not them i'm me so if i'm active i'm active do you get it i'm not your auntie or your cousin do you get it no i'm nicole i'm doing fine do you know what i mean yeah the worst thing about my pregnancy is that i'm always out of breath I Okay, so you guys just saw that. Let me come back on the screen here. Give me just a second. Um, where's my video? There we go. All right, sorry about that. So you guys heard in that video snippet that I just played where she's talking about she's out of breath. And in the article, the UK Daily Mail reported that she had reached out to her midwife and they were basically telling her this is normal. You know, your baby's growing bigger and it's just harder to breathe. 
which is kind of true. It does get a little bit harder to breathe and walk and sleep, especially late into your pregnancy. But you should be able to just breathe fine. Maybe not, you know, run a marathon because you have a whole human inside of you. But it shouldn't be where, like, you can't breathe. And that's what she was saying. And like I was telling you guys before in, in previous streams, that there's a lot of racism that goes on in the medical establishment. I even played that white doctor, I forgot her name, um, who spoke about this, you know, medical biases, how a lot of times people in the medical field, when black people come to get treatment, they're kind of dismissed. You know, we're, we're, there's still a lot of medical biases where people think that black people don't feel as much pain. They can withstand pain. They don't need as much proper care, medication. This is all documented. And that's why, I, and it's so ironic that this happened because I was just talking about this a few streams ago. And I was telling people that you have to be your own advocate. Because I went through the same thing. And from what she's describing, not being able to breathe I feel like there might have been some blood clots in her system. She might have been having a pul pulmonary embolism because that's what happened to me. And remember, I told you guys my story that I was at work at my desk and I felt like I couldn't breathe and I started crying. And one of my coworkers rushed me to um, this when I lived in Charlotte. So they took me to CMC, Carolina's Medical Center. I get there. My husband comes down there and basically... They're telling me, oh, well, it's just probably, you know, you're just probably having a crisis. And I said, no, I, I've had crises my whole life. This doesn't feel like a normal crisis. And, you know, they basically sent me off with a prescription for Tylenol and told me to take that and, you know, I'll be fine. And so at this point, I'm frustrated. So we leave and we literally pull up to my apartment. And mind you, my, my son at the time is probably like three. We pull up to the apartment. And as soon as I step out the car... I felt like I was about to pass out, like I could just could not breathe. And I was like, you have to take me back to the hospital. I feel like I'm about to die. I said, I, I'm about to die. Take me back right now. And the whole time I'm in the car, like my breathing is labored. I, I can't even cry because I can barely breathe. And so as soon as we come back, they're like, well, you just left. And I was like, tell them I want an MRI right now. And so I, but at that point, my husband is snapping, like, get her an MRI. She needs a chest scan. She cannot breathe. And he's going off. So finally, the ER doctor takes me in, gives me an MRI, and they find not one, but three blood clots. And the one in my lung, if we would have not caught it within like another 30 minutes, it would have went to my brain and I would have had a stroke and could have potentially died. It was that bad. And it took me almost, I was on warfarin for almost a year. But the worst part is because the clot was in my arm and in my leg, I had, to, I had to go through physical therapy. I had to learn to rewalk. I had to learn to reuse this arm. You know, so it's 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 so scary, you know, and that's what I'm saying. Imagine if we'd have just went home and I laid down. I, if I would have laid down, I wouldn't have woke up because those clots were traveling. And to see the doctor come back in the room, red faced and embarrassed, like, oh my god, I'm glad you came back. We found blood clots. I'm like, what the hell's a blood clot? I didn't know what the shit was. And he's like, this is very serious, and I can't believe they just let you leave, and they didn't do a test. So I believe that might have been what she was going through, and you know. The fact that she was healthy, she was a dancer, that's even worse. That should have been even more telling. Like with me, I'm already high risk. Everything with me is high risk from pregnancy to just life, okay? So I, I'm a little bit more cautious. But when I hear people who are healthy and they're saying things like they can't breathe, they don't feel good, that should even be more of a telltale sign. You know what I'm saying? Because that's not their normal thing. Like I've always had health issues my whole life. But if somebody has been healthy, you would think that'd be more of a red flag. So it's just so sad. I mean, the whole situation, you know, for the baby to also die, it's, it's like, did they try to even, and I don't, I don't want to think negative, but did they try hard to save the baby? Because like I said, I've known girls who went into labor at six months and their kids were saved, you know, and at eight months, the baby's at least a pound, pound and a half, sometimes two pounds. So I, I don't know, but the whole thing is just really, really chilling. And once again, I just want to stress to everyone, be your own advocate. If something does not feel right, especially when you're talking about giving birth and becoming a mother, pregnancy is a very, very stressful time. The fact that women give birth and come out of pregnancy alive and well with healthy children is a blessing. There's so many things that can go wrong with your body in those nine months. There's so many things that can go wrong with your children 
in utero and once you have them you know i've known babies who have passed because the umbilical cord was around their neck and when you're going through labor that's like the closest thing to death that's what the old people used to say back down south that labor is the closest thing that a woman will ever get to to you know experiencing death because you can die during childbirth you know so that the situation is heartbreaking, but I didn't want to speak on it until there was more information. You know, I didn't, you know, I wanted to know what, because that, that's not normal. If she's so healthy, what caused her death? What caused a healthy woman who's eight months pregnant to not only lose her life, but her child? You know, so my heart definitely goes out to them. Um, the, the boyfriend, the family, the whole situation is just really sad. But I wanted to touch on that because we have to be our own advocate. If something does not feel right, get a first, second, third, even a fourth opinion. You know, I've had two friends. Uh, one discovered that her cancer came back after they were saying that there was nothing wrong and, you know, it's all in her head. She went to a different doctor, and they found out that her cancer was coming back. Uh, another friend of mine, I talked about this in the stream, you know, is dealing with um, fibromyalgia, you know, like really serious stuff. So you have to be your own advocate. You have to. So um, let me see here. Um, and to Shea Hardy says, I'm afraid to get pregnant. And these recent horror stories are telling me to never do it. Um, Kendra Palmer says, rest in peace, beautiful angel. This is very disheartening. Um, yeah, it's really sad. Let me go ahead and read some of these super chats here. Um, Simone G says, hey, T, love you. Keep up the good work. I've been following you for years. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming through today. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. We got a $99, $99.99 super chat. Thank you. And this comes from Lee um, Okwude. Woody, sorry if I mispronounced it, says, keep giving us the tea, sis. Love you. Love you, too, and thank you so much for coming through. Thank you for the super chat. I truly appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Carrie Henderson says, hey, T, I love your realness. Met you last year at Essence Fest. Wish we could go back. You're so down to earth. Uh, much love, by the way. We took some cute pics, boo. Oh, thank you so much. I had a wonderful time at Essence Fest, and I definitely wish that we could go back to 2019 because 2020... I've been over 2020 since January, and it's just making me just, I want 2021 to just get here at this point. But thank you so much. It was nice meeting you as well. I appreciate the super chat. Um, let's see here. Little Cynical says, Mama four here. My doctor told me to come anytime I was concerned, no matter if I thought it was too much. It was. It's always better to be safe than sorry. My doctor said to listen to my body and my gut feelings. Amen. You have to. You know, if you feel like something is not right, at the end of the day, we only have one body. And, and and once that body is gone, it's a wrap. So you have to do everything you can to protect that body and to listen to your body. And when your body is saying, saying that something does not feel right, you need to go and check it out. You know, and a lot of men are stubborn that way. I mean, I've known people who have literally died on couches because they thought, well, let me just take an aspirin and I'll be okay in the morning. And it ended up being something serious. So you never feel too proud to go to the ER more than once. People, you know, go home and feel like, oh, I don't want to be a bother. Uh, how are you a bother when you're paying insurance and paying good damn money for insurance? That's the thing that always trips me out with some of these doctors when they get mad or get attitudes. Like, I'm, I'm not, you know, like, th this is money that's coming out my check. I'm paying for this health insurance. So I'm going to use it as needed. You can't get mad, you know? So, yeah, definitely advocate for yourself. Um... Angela Mercal says, newcomer here, much love from VA, slowly sipping my tea. Thank you and welcome to the family. I appreciate you coming through on this Good Friday. Um, let's see here. Cassandra sent a $9.99 sticker. Thank you so much for the sticker. Appreciate it. Um, baby Kitsun says, T, I finally caught a live. Been following you since I was 12. I'm now 18. You've shaped my teen years, T. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much, and thanks for coming through. I appreciate it. Um, Sandra Richardson says, hey, Auntie T, glad to end my week on a good note listening to you. Blessings, my queen. Blessings to you, too, as well, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you for everybody. We have, like, over 11,000 people in here. Thank you all for coming through. Um, Miss Mena says, facts, T, I had a high-risk, dangerous pregnancy, and it was on, it was, hold on, it was something. It was on Balas. Saved me. Oh, an ambulance, I think you were trying to write. Saved me by getting referred to a black female special. Not an ambulance. I don't know what you were, but somebody saved her 
by getting her to go to a black female specialist. So that's a blessing. And we need more people. We need more people of color in the medical field, you know, because that helps to kind of deter some of those biases. We need more black doctors and OBGYNs and, you know, things like that. You know, that's why we need to encourage people to still get into the medical field, still get into things like that, and not just so much, you know, becoming a rapper or entertainer, you know. Um, London Girl says, love you, T. It's 1.30 a.m. in London. Hoping you are, hoping you say, wretched ass, Florida. <laughs> for me, love you, Shola. Thank you so much, and thanks for coming through. <laughs> I haven't said that in a long time. Um, Fatty French says, hey, T, this week was crazy, but I'm glad I caught the tea. Yes, ma'am, and thank you so much for the super chat. Thanks for coming through. So I've been on here for 20 minutes. I want to go ahead and talk about the next topic here. So... Um, I, let's talk about the Tamar Braxton situation, okay? So we've all been hearing a lot about um, Tamar. It was announced today that she was hospitalized. Her boyfriend, um, David, ended up calling the ambulance, and they're saying that it was a possible suicide attempt, okay? So this is really disturbing. This, this whole situation with Tamar is really sad. Let me go ahead and set up this video so you guys can see this. And what's crazy is that yesterday... We had just announced the new show for Tamar, which is called Tamar Get Your Life. And I didn't see the preview until today. But for what I heard, a lot of people were kind of clowning her on the shade room and on the blogs. And a lot of people didn't really like the trailer. So people are speculating, is it because of the negative backlash on the trailer? Is that what might have pushed her over the edge? I don't know. Um, but let me go ahead and play this for you guys. Give me just a second to get this set up. Braxton's fans are concerned after reports surfaced that the star attempted suicide. According to multiple reports, the 43-year-old singer, actress, and TV personality was found unresponsive by her boyfriend, David Adefiso, at the Ritz-Carlton residences in Los Angeles, where they were staying. In his 911 call, David said Tamar had been drinking and had taken an unknown amount of prescription pills. Sources tell The Blast that David believed the incident was a possible suicide attempt. The Blast also reports that Tamar is currently in stable condition, but still unconscious. She is currently under 24-hour watch at the hospital. I'm feeling choked. I feel it every single day. This all happened on the same day that Tamar's new WeTV reality show, Tamar Braxton Get You Life, was announced. In a statement to ET, WeTV wrote, quote, Tamar Braxton has been part of the WeTV family for nearly a decade. We are keeping her and her family in our thoughts and prayers and joining with her fans, sending strength and healing at this difficult time. I'm one of those women, just like all the women in America that I run into, is that, you know, we never give up. We do whatever it takes especially when you're thrown into the position where you're a single mom. It's like everything is hard, but nothing is too hard. Tamar is a mom to seven-year-old son. Okay, so I just wanted to play a little bit of that. Um, let me go ahead and read some of the super chats here. Um, Pac says, hey, pretty girl, thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, LaSheila Tucker says, hey, auntie, finally cut. I finally cut two toxic best friends who only paid me dust when they needed advice. It's hard, but I'm trying. My mom is tox is toxic during her, oh, had toxemia during her labor with my older sister. It's pronounced Lee Shayla. <laughs> Everybody's teaching me how to pronounce their names. Thank you so much. Um, the whole Tamar Braxton situation is just really unfortunate. Um, people are saying that it might have been accident, you know, accidental, her making mixing alcohol with prescription drugs. But I also feel like this this year is a very dark year. There's a lot of dark energy. There's a lot of things manifesting. Um, we I talked about the whole demon time thing a few months ago. That energy is strong. You know, that negative energy, things telling you that you're no good and you'll never amount to anything. And I believe a lot of these celebrities are facing, they're at a crossroads. 
Remember when I told you guys months ago that this whole C-19 situation was the great equalizer? And in a minute, there's really not going to be a such thing as a so-called celebrity because right now everybody's on equal playing fields. Hollywood is shut down. There's no movies. There's really no production. There's nothing. So a lot of these celebrities now are stuck, you know, trying to find themselves. You know, when you're used to a certain lifestyle and you're used to being on red carpets and going to events and, you know, you're that girl and all of a sudden that just comes to a halt. That can be that can be something very, very drastic, not only on the ego, but on somebody's mental health. OK, think about people who work regular nine to five jobs whose situation just came to a screeching halt where you were, you know, one day you're clowning with your coworkers and you're talking about what you watched on TV over the weekend and, you know, just having conversations to find out that your job is not essential and everything shut down. Even like the kids who were all at school together, hanging out with their friends, and then school shuts down. Like this shift has been hard for all of us. And I think that celebrities, it's, it's taking an even tougher toll on them because at this point, they're not getting that attention. They're not like, nobody's worried about them like that. Nobody's really, you know, people are just trying to figure out how they're going to make it day to day and take care of their families and make ends meet. So I think that it's affecting a lot of people. Um, let me see here. There's something else I wanted to, to say. You know, there's been talks about how, you know, celebrity and fame can definitely affect you mentally. Okay. That's not like the, the, that's not the, that's not the sanest thing, you know what I'm saying? To be involved in is fame and, you know, status. Because once that comes crumbling down, it takes a toll on people. I mean, recently, uh, we just had Elvis's grandson, Benjamin. Joined the 27 Club, you know, where he passed away from the S word, you know, so it's it's real and it's really sad. And I just hope that, you know, Tamar finds it within herself and realizes that, you know, she has a family, she has a son and she's loved and she doesn't need the validation of strangers. You know, that's what a lot of celebrities need to realize. They need, in this time of C-19 and being quarantined, you need to surround yourself with people who genuinely love you who genuinely want the best for you and stop worrying about, you know, attention and validation from people that you don't, who you don't even know exist. Stop worrying about their opinions. Stop worrying about, you know, what they think and what they're doing. And you know what I'm saying? And I just think that we all need to get back to the core essence of who we are. And so I just think that it's really, really sad that she felt the need if that's what it was, was an attempt to take herself out, you know, because she's very much loved. She has a huge family. And I think fame has taken a toll on them. On all the sisters. And that's why sometimes, like I always say, you have to be careful what you wish for. They got fame. They got worldwide recognition. But their family is basically splintered. They're not as close as they were when the show first started. And I think all of that, all of the drama, has just taken a mental toll on Tamar. At this point. So, yeah, we definitely have to lift her up in prayer. That whole situation is sad. I was shocked when I heard that this morning. Um, let me see here. The S word is real. People, Okay, April S in the comments says the S word is real. People need to quit downplaying people's feelings. Just because you don't understand the S word don't mean that you shouldn't validate someone else's feelings. Shame on you. Exactly. It's definitely real. And, you know, we, we have to be able to empathize with other people in situations. I think what she's going through is definitely a cry for help. Um, and I think at this point, her sisters and her immediate family, they need to gather around her. And they need to really do some deep-seated seeking and realize that all that drama and all that mess that they did trying to get famous and go viral and be on television, it's not worth it. At the end of the day, what is worth it is that family unit. Um, let's see. I think I've read that one. Uh, Luna Galaxy says, such a beautiful queen, all around definition of true authenticity. Thank you so much, Luna Galaxy. I like that name. I appreciate it. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Kelly Arango sent a 1999 sticker, says, thank you for being you. Thank you so much, sis. Thanks for coming through today. Um, Jenna Lindsay says, I saw a live of Adrian Curry calling out some females from Adriana Curry calling out some females from the Me Too movement. I didn't see that one. I didn't see that at all. But thank you for letting me know. 
Um, guy from Texas says, peace, T, into the chat. Thank you for joining us today, guy from Texas. Appreciate it. We have over 12,000 people watching. Please make sure you guys hit the like button. It's free. Hit the like button to bring some more people in here. Um, Randy Austin says, love you, T. I love you, too. Thank you for coming through. Um, Flora Tully says, it's sad. I don't wish harm, but I think the reality check may be needed that these celebrities are not above us and they are humans, not gods. I agree 100%. And like I said, it has this whole situation has shown a lot of these people's real characters. And they cannot handle not being talked about and not being idolized. You got T.I. out here going on a hobo tour demanding that people put him in his catalog on the same level as a Jay-Z, Kanye West, Lil Wayne. You know, it's like the fact that these people are not getting the attention that they're used to getting all the time. It's driving some of these celebrities just insane. It really is. And they don't know how to handle that. And it's sad. It, it's, it's just really sad. Um, let's see here. Nathaniel says, hey, T, been watching you for years. I love your content. I'm also from Minneapolis. Can you say I'm going to leave Will again? Oh, God. I'm going to leave Will. I'm going to leave Will. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a leave Will. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Y'all are a mess. People keep typing that in my comment section. I'll be cracking up. Oh, um, let's see here. Uh, Yardley Moist. What's up, Yardley? Says, I love you, T. Them lips are killing me. Tell Nick Cannon to stop watching too much Malcolm X movie. <laughs> love you. Love you, too, and thanks for coming through. Thank you. Um, Mr. GC15 says, speaking of the 27 Club, pay attention to little Uzi Vert, who's turning 27 next year. He did say in an interview in 2008, in three years, I'm going to give my life to Marilyn Manson. That's very interesting. And I've spoken, I've touched on little Uzi in the past. And um, Uzi's very shady. If you really research Uzi, little Uzi, and how he got his rise to fame and how many people he stepped on to get to where he's at, he thought by stepping, and I forget that black Philly lady, she was his manager. Y'all can put in the chat. I always forget her name. Real beautiful uh, woman. She was on The Breakfast Club. Um, totally shitted on her. Totally turn his back on the people who helped him, you know, rise to fame because he thought that running to Atlantic and getting a major was going to be in, was going to be everything only for that to somewhat crumble before his eyes. So it's going to be interesting once he turns 27 to see what happens. That's why I always talk about the power of the tongue. You know, people speaking things into existence without even realizing it. And you have to be careful with that with that tongue, the things that you say. And the energy that you put out there. And a lot of these celebrities are suffering from that. Of them not being able to control their tongues. And the energy that they're putting out there. They don't know how to deal with that. So thank you for the super chat, bro. Um, zombie the homo coolest. I, honey, you know I butchered that. Says, LOL, man T. He wished somebody would try and do an entanglement with Tiny. Ooh. <laughs> Well, Floyd Mayweather tried, honey. He tried. Uh, Johnny Cadwell sent nine ninety nine. Thank you so much. Um, Maya sent fifty bucks. She says sending more love. Thank you so much, Maya. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. You're definitely looking out today. Um, so yeah, DJ Diamond Cuts. Thank you so much. I'm um, Soul Vibes in the comments. Appreciate it. Yeah, he 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 stepped on a lot of people. So now, um. Who should, who should we talk about next? Megan. We'll say the Nick Cannon thing for last. We're going to say the best for last. So let's go to the Megan situation, okay? This situation is not sitting well with me at all. It's a lot of, there's a lot of fuckery amiss with this whole Meg Thee Stallion shooting situation with Tory, with Tory Lanez, okay? And I'm sure I will offend, you know, her fans and a few people, which is fine. You know, I'm here for, for the uproar. Um, the story does not make sense to me, okay? So let me start by saying that. Initially, when it came out, let's go back to this weekend. So we all saw her partying with Kylie Jenner. And that, because I didn't post that initially, when I seen that video, I wasn't feeling it. 
I thought, like, to me, let me say this. I feel like Meg and Tori, they're both agents of chaos. They have very chaotic energy. They feel the need to have to be with so many different people. And people who I see just connecting with, with so many different people, that that is that's chaotic to my spirit. When I see people with just, just bouncing from friend to friend and everybody's a friend. And, you know, a lot of y'all see it as, oh, she's just friendly. Maybe I'm old school. But when I was growing up, that was what you called a busybody. When you just go from place to place, person to person, and, you know, you're mixing energy with people who, it's like, you're, you're mixing yourself and energy with people who don't even vibe with the people that you were clicking up with not even a week ago or two months ago or three months ago. So I found it very strange when I first seen the video with her and Kylie. One, if you really watch it, Kylie wasn't trying to go live. And I'm going to play the video in a second. But when I watched it, I was like, well, this is odd. When did her and Kylie get the hanging? Because remember this. Let me pull this up. A year ago, she was friends with Jordan Woods. They were, you know, they were, they were everybody's, you know, BFF, favorite friendship. So I thought that was just weird. Like, I get a, a, a big social climbing vibe, you know, from her. Okay, good. Y'all understand the word busybody. It's not to be disparaging. I'm just talking about her energy. She has a very busy, chaotic energy, constantly connecting with different people. Even whenever they post her in the Shade Room or Hollywood Unlocked, what is always the top comment when she is posted? Because she's usually always posted with somebody else. It's never just usually Megan by herself. And usually the top comment is always, Megan be with everybody. Or she's always with so many different people. Or, you know, she's she hangs out with everyone. You always see that comment, right? So when I first seen her with Kylie, I was just, I thought that was kind of strange. And then let me let me go back and pull up the clip here. Cause when the live starts, it's almost like Kylie. Let me see if I posted it. You could tell she wasn't trying to go live. Let me see if I have it here. I don't see it. It's 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 somewhere. I don't I don't know. You know I post so much stuff. I'm trying to see. I can find it. It's not in here. Let me try again. No, it's not on this one. So I don't know. But you guys have seen the video because people pointed that out that you could tell that Kylie wasn't necessarily trying to go live. And she was like, oh, are we live? And then, you know, she had to kind of play it off. And then it was like that she really didn't have anything to say. It was a bunch of um and uh-huh and we're just kicking it. And then you see Tory Lanez run to get into the into the frame. So I, I just, it just came off as, as very just disingenuous. You know what I mean? It just came off like, you know, look who we're with. You know, look where we're at between the both of them. So then they leave and supposedly there's a shooting and Tori is arrested. And we don't know too much of what's going on. And then after that, we start hearing more stuff about, you know, uh, glass was on her foot. She got cut by glass and had to be taken to the hospital. So then that didn't make a lot of sense. And then video surfaced of them getting arrested and being laid out on the ground. And then at that point, it came out. She, she ended up coming out and she confirmed that she was shot. So let me go ahead and just show you guys some of this stuff here. Give me just a second here. Oh, where did my OBS go? Okay, here we go. Okay, let me fix this real quick. So this is what was being uh, said. So she says the narrative that's being reported about Sunday morning's events are inaccurate. I'd like to set the record straight. On Sunday morning, I suffered gunshot wounds as a result of a crime that was committed against me and done with the intention to physically harm me. I was never arrested. The police officers drove me to the hospital where I underwent surgery to remove the bullets. I'm incredibly grateful to be alive and that I'm expected to make a full recovery, but it was important for me to clarify the details about the traumatic night. I'm currently focused on my recovery so I can return back to my life and back to making music as soon as possible. Um, then she says, okay, this is the part where she was like, I was never arrested. The whole experience has been an eye opener and a blessing in disguise. I hate that it took this experience for me to learn to protect my energy. 
So now you see people talking about protecting their energy and all that stuff, right? So then after that, what was very strange is that her beat maker threatened Tory Lanez. And basically on, on, on social media that's being watched by the police says Tory Lanez, count your fucking days. Um, then her best friend, Kelsey Nicole, who was also in the car, says, I want to clear up rumors that I shot Megan because people were accusing her of being like, you know, maybe it's a jealous best friend. Maybe they're pulling a Yolanda and Selena and all this stuff. So she comes out and she says, I wasn't the one with the gun and would never do anything like that. However, I was present. Okay. Then her, somebody named I am Jonathan, I think is her stylist or something like that. They come out and they say the following. Megan is around too many fake MFers. MFers that just want to be around. Ain't no real shit. Mother effers not built like me at all. Mother effers know what's real and genuine, but I'm a walk. And then the LAPD came out and said, a spokesperson for the LAPD tells TMZ, Megan never told them she was a victim of a crime. The spokesperson said at the time Megan said, the, at the time Megan was with the police, she did not report that she was a victim of any crime and the LAPD have not received any additional information at this time. And then we were talking about the whole, um, her comparing herself to Tupac, right? So that was just a few days ago. Then it comes out today that the cops are now investigating and they're saying that Tory Lanez may have shot her. So let me read y'all this. So it says LAPD is now officially looking into the allegations that Meg Thee Stallion suffered gunshot wounds and they're taking a hard look at Tory Lanez as a potential trigger man. Law enforcement sources tell TMZ detectives have now opened an assault with a deadly weapons investigation into what allegedly happened early Sunday morning, shortly before the cops pulled over Tory's chauffeur driven SUV in the Hollywood Hills. As we reported, Sources connected to the investigation say Tori allegedly shot Megan in the feet as she exited the SUV on the heels of an argument that, re that erupted in the SUV. Remember, Tori was arrested and booked for possession of a concealed weapon. A handgun was found in the SUV. Upgrading the investigation to assault with a deadly weapon could mean new charges are coming. Tori hasn't been named as a suspect, but our law enforcement sources say cops are lasered in on him. Now sources connected to Tory say it seems like he will claim it was accidental if he was charged with the shooting and the fact that the LAPD is investigating it as, a, investigating it as an assault with a deadly weapon as opposed to attempted homicide could mean that in, could mean they at least in theory believe it was an accident. Right now law enforcement sources tell us cops are having trouble getting witnesses to cooperate which can make, a, uh, make it difficult to prosecute Tory. All right. So give me just a second here. Oh, that was a lot of damn reading. Can I sip some tea real quick? Shit, I feel like Mother Goose, bitch. Okay. So now what's even crazy <clears throat> is um, Kelsey's mother and sister were on Twitter going off. That was the day that everything came out when Meg put out her statement. Put a teacup if you guys saw what Kelsey's mother and sister posted before I believe they were threatened and told to delete what they wrote and make their pages private. Before they were told to do that, um, I will send some screenshots. I don't know where I put them, but put a teacup if you guys saw what they wrote. Okay, good. So I see a few teacups. Let me pull my notes up because I wrote down what they wrote. I just don't have the receipts. Basically, Kelsey's mom was going off um, about her daughter in her comment section on Instagram about her daughter covering up for Meg the Stallion. And the sister was also saying that her that her sister needs to stop being so loyal to Meg because she ended up getting arrested and going to jail trying to protect Meg. OK, and then shortly after that, Kelsey came out basically saying that her mom and her sister didn't know what they were talking about. I'm more inclined to believe the mom and the sister because see, Kelsey wants, she, she gets residual fame from being Megan's friend. 
So, of course, she's going to try and clean it up because she's enjoying that lifestyle of being Megan's friend. Why would a mother and a sister who don't really have a social media presence or a following come out and say something like that? You were obviously talking or pillow, you know, what we call pillow talking, not that they were in bed together. It's just a word. You were obviously telling, you know, venting and ranting to your mother and your sister about what really happened, not thinking they would take it to social media. Because remember, people were initially accusing Kelsey of shooting Megan because nobody would think it would be Tori. Why would Tori? You know, he's a superstar. Why would he risk shooting another superstar? People were trying to twist it that, oh, Kelsey must have did this, jealousy, and all this other stuff. So, so much so she had to come out and defend herself. And I believe that when people were accusing Kelsey of that is when the mother and the sister, they got tired of the accusations and they started speaking out. So there's definitely more... There's definitely more going on in this entire situation. Um, let's see here. All I do is win. Nine ninety nine says I was thinking Meg was trying to be Lizzo. Once you have white people talk about you, you've made it. Example: Jeff Bezos had a picture with Lizzo on Twitter. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, Truth to Rose says I'm gonna leave. Will. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Um. Jessica J says probably shot her due to the Napoleon complex. And so it, sweetheart says Megan is a drunk. Megan got shot in the foot. She's going to have a problem twerking and dropping it low. Um, it's, it's a lot of stuff going on. Um, let's see here. Ariel says, T, why don't you have the receipts on hand? Because I don't. Y'all can go Google the receipts and find them yourself. They're on social media. But enough people have seen the receipt, so there's I don't need to have my hand. But um, Nephi says I can and can't take I can't see Tori being corny enough to do both. There's definitely more to the mix, and like I said, I feel like they're both agents of chaos. They both kind of have the same personality, you know, very strong headed, and you know, a lot of people are acting like Tori. Some, you know, I keep seeing folks saying that Tori's being. Black uh, uh, railroaded and, you know, y'all so worried about Tory, y'all need to find Breonna Taylor's killers. It's funny that whenever it comes to possibly holding somebody who could have done something bad accountable, now y'all want to bring up your Breonna Taylor. Keep Breonna Taylor's name out the fuckery. If he shot somebody, he should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. If something happened and, you know, they have proof that he did something, leave Breonna Taylor out of it. Because at the end of the day, to me, she needs to watch the people that she surrounds herself with. I also see a lot of people saying, well, where's her team? And, you know, she needs a, a better team around her. Well, she had a good team around her. And she basically left them running behind Rock Nation, you know, thinking she was going on to something bigger and better. You know, when she was with her original team with T. Ferris and Carl Crawford and all of them, she didn't have all these issues. You know, everybody wants to make it seem like Tory Lanez all of a sudden is some outstanding guy. Um, but let's not forget, is he not the same one who got Selena uh, Powell jumped? We talked about this a few months ago. When she got jumped, um, it was on behest of Tory Lanez. He had, uh, what's her name, Kaylin Garcia base, and her friends basically jump her. But it was funny because it was Selena Powell. Everybody laughed and kind of brushed it off. So he's always shown his true colors. He's always had that, that side to him, but everybody wants to ignore that now. Also, let's not forget when he was doing that whole quarantine radio, all he did was basically exploit all those women, and those women, don't get me wrong, they were allowing themselves to be exploited. They, too, were looking for fame, and, you know, they, too, were attention-seeking. But let's not act like he just had a whole bunch of respect for the women that were going on to quarantine radio. So I, I'm not understanding how the sudden now people are like, oh, he could never, he could never, he could never. He could. But I also believe that she put herself in an unfortunate situation and she needs to wake up and realize that. How many more people have to tell you to watch the people that you're around and watch who you're tying yourself to and watch who you're allowing yourself to be around? We spoke about this even on my Instagram page. Um, give me just a second. The girl Carl signed to imitate to imitate Meg through shade indirectly and said Meg says that Meg hangs out with people just to seem likable. Coincidence or not. Nah. I'm posting this the second time. Thank you so much, Ashley. Yeah, I, I see a lot of people saying that, oh, she's friendly. She's friendly. 
what makes her friendly because she just hangs with a bunch of different people? That doesn't make you friendly. That just means you're a busybody. You like to hang with a bunch of different people. Nobody knows her personally. I don't know her personally. You know, but like I said, when I see people who go from click to click and hang from different people who just really have just so many, like, you know, like their energies are just totally different, then I have to question the person who's hanging with all these different people. You know, and you got to understand, even when she came into the game, I had heard that her and Moneybag Yo's relationship was more for the industry. They weren't even really together, that she had a whole real boyfriend at the time, but they thought by connecting their brands and saying that they were dating would help, you know, their star level. So she's done this before, you know. Um, let me see, was something else. She said something else today, too, because she was upset because 50 Cent had posted a meme. And we all know 50 Cent is a damn clown. But she said, black women are so... Oh, hold on. Let me show y'all this. Give me just a second. Pull up my OBS so y'all can see it. Okay. So she says, black women are so unprotected. And we hold so many things in to protect feelings of others without considering our own. It might be funny to y'all on the internet. And just another messy topic for you to talk about, but this is my real life and I'm real hurt and traumatized. And she was responding to this meme where 50 Cent said, run, Ricky, run, what the fuck is really going on? And of course, you know, the memes were being cranked out. Um, and that's social media for you. There's always going to be memes being posted. But my thing is this, while I get what she's trying to say about black women, I'm also, I also got a side eye that. You can't say that black women are so unprotected and we hold so many things in to protect other people when you're giving conflicting reports. If this man hurts you, you need to speak up. Why are you covering up for him? And y'all can say, well, she might be scared. It's an industry thing. But what does that teach young girls? If you're being abused, if somebody shot you, I mean, that bullet could have ricocheted, hit her in the heart. You know, it, it, anything could have happened. It, it was in a small space like a car. So why hold this in? Who? Are, why protect that person? It doesn't make any sense. Yes, thank you. I'm, you I know I'm going to keep it real. Thank you, Candace. We can't say that black women are so unprotected, but you're not speaking. Protect yourself by coming forward with what happened. Right now, your own black friend was getting thrown on the bus and drugged and being accused of, you know, trying to kill you, and you were silent. Now they're saying that it was Tory Lanez who did it, so stop protecting him. It, it's really sad. Uh, exactly, pushing that whole no snitching code. And at some point in time, if you were a victim of something, it's not snitching, you were a victim. The whole situation is sad. Uh, Millie in the comments, uh, Melanie Johnson says, you're right, T, she needs to first protect herself and tell the truth. Exactly. It's way too many stories, way too many conflicting things. And it's like, why try to protect him when your life could have ended that night? We could have been reading headlines, Meg the Stallion shot and killed. Thank God it didn't end that way. But don't protect him so he can do it to the next person. Selena came out and put him on blast and everybody ignored it. Because people don't really like her. And now here he is again tied to another situation of abusing a woman. So it's not about black women not being protected when you yourself are not protecting yourself and going and telling the police what happened. Um, Sean Martin says, hey, T, thank you for bringing us the real. My five-month-old niece is fussy and teething, but she got quiet when I turned down your live Lovely tea to the rescue. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I don't know what's going on with this stream. We got 16,000 people in here. I'm going to just keep going. Yeah, I'm just going to keep going. If it acts up, I can reload this stream because it's being recorded. Um, if we got 16,000 people in here, we should have a bunch of likes. Please hit that like button. Um, let me read some of these uh, super chats here. Chantel Love 95 says, whoop, whoop, caught another live. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, Esmerada Solano says, Megan wants to be liked by everyone. That shows inauthentic. Hopefully this experience helps her live in her truth instead of trying to be palatable to everyone. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. 
And especially we're not talking about school. You know, it's one thing like, you know, if this was like elementary or junior high and you just want to be liked by people, these are all grown adults. And the industry is so shady and fickle and fake. Why even be around other fake energy? It, just, it doesn't make any sense. You know, find your click, ride with your click, be cordial. You know, you can be cordial with people, but you don't have to, you know, be around everybody's, you know, chaotic energy. You don't have to be that it girl all the time with so many different people because, again, it starts to look inauthentic. Um, let me see here. Connie Smith says, honestly, Auntie, I'm believing Megan's shooting was done for publicity. I'm giving the whole thing the side eye. Mm. You never know. You know, truth is stranger than fiction. You never know. Um, TK says, Meg got a lot of traction with driving the boat. I don't know if she actually enjoys being around all those people. It's just her go-to tactic to get press. That might be true as well. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Christabel Amoa says, hello, I sent a request on IG two weeks ago. You're my main news source. Thank you so much. I'm not approving anybody on my IG, um, right now. It's, it's shut, it's shut down. I'm protecting my energy, but thank you. Um, let's see, point blank. The shooter says love from Brooklyn. Been here for four years and I've never missed the video. Um, you always keep it real. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Terry Williams says, fame by any means is truly a disease. Love you, T. Um, sent you an IG request. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. Kamir um, Cases says, I'm an introvert. I refuse to be buddy-buddied with any and everyone. Honestly, it's a waste of energy. It's pronounced Kamar. <laughs> Love you, T. Love you, too. Thank you. Um, Joshua Young says, hey, T, remind me of my best friend that passed away a few years ago. Watching you feels like I'm watching my friend again. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about your friend, and thank you for coming through and supporting me today. I really appreciate it. So, um, back to the Megan thing, why I feel like it looks like this stream. Let me try and refresh this here. It's like the stream is going back and forth. I'm going I'm to hit refresh and see if that helps. So, back to the whole Meg the Stallion thing. Let me show y'all this. The reason why I'm big on not dealing with so many different people and, you know, putting yourself in situations and dealing with a lot of different energies. Let me go ahead and show you guys this. We talked about this on my Instagram page a few days ago. And which is just ironic because this was before the whole Meg the Stallion situation. Pull that up really quick here. This is why you have to be careful just going around any and everybody. So this is what I posted on my Instagram. And basically, it's a, I wouldn't call it a meme, but it says, everyone shouldn't touch you. Y'all are going to learn to stop allowing these spirits to lay hands on you. Some ain't praying, they're praying and planting and seducing. So that is just, you know, what people need to realize. And then I went on to post that science confirms. Hold on, Let's see if I can move this up here. Science confirms that we absorb energy from each other. And then... I went on to post, have you ever gotten a bad vibe from someone? Maybe it was someone you walked past on the street, a colleague or a friend. Sometimes even without words, you felt different. Perhaps you were able to absorb energy from them. If you've ever heard the term, the term aura or energy field, you know that humans are no strangers to energy transformations. And then I go on to say this, because y'all not like to go on my little crazy rants, honey, on Instagram. And basically, I said, PSA, lovely T's about to go on another crazy rant. The ones who get it will, the rest of y'all can dismiss it and go on about your day. And I said, energy transfer is real. You cannot let everybody hug you. Some people have negative entities attached to them that can and will transfer to you. If your spirit gets anxious, sick, or agitated around certain people... That, you're, that is your spirit trying to guide you away from their demons. Protect yourself. Your spirit, al 
to protect yourself and your spirit always. You don't owe nan person an explanation for abruptly living a situation or cutting someone off that makes you uncomfortable. Wash your hands after shaking hands with strangers or someone that you believe has bad energy. Imagine whatever negativity was attached to them. Imagine it being washed down the drain. So that, and we had a really deep conversation. I mean, we had like 10,000 likes, lot, just a lot of conversation about that. And that was before the whole Meg the Stallion thing, ironically enough. So when I say that, it's not to knock her. I, I just deal in energy. So, you know what I'm saying? That's just how I deal with people. That's how I look at people. I look at their energy. I look at the people they surround themselves with. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't care about pictures and oh, we're friends today and now I'm with this person. I don't care about that. I look at their energy, the people that they're hanging around, the things that they're doing. That's just how I look at everyone: celebrity, regular people, children, all that stuff. You know what I mean? And you have to be very, very careful. Twenty twenty is a very, very spiritual year. And you have to watch your energy. You have to watch the things that you consume, the things that you digest, the people that you're around. So hopefully with all of this, she surrounds herself around more genuine people who have her best interest at heart. And she stops trying to think that just because she's in this industry and she's found this new fame, that all of a sudden people care about her the same way that she cares about them. Not in this industry. In this industry, it's strictly business. You're lucky if you can find some genuine friends, but it's mainly strictly business. I mean, you, and I know a lot of people are trying to, you know, go in on um, the Kardashians. But you have to realize, while some of them, like Kim, is definitely a clout chaser, and she made it by social climbing and trying to attach herself to, you know, big name black celebrities like Jay-Z, Beyonce, and, you know, she'd be at all the parties. She definitely is a clout chaser. She also has chaotic energy. She's calmed down a bit now that she finally, you know, got her bag and got Kanye and her kids. But when she was coming up, she was definitely the same way. I remember her, you know, in the background running behind Paris Hilton and all that stuff. But one thing about Kylie is that she was never really that type of person. You know, she really doesn't go from people to people. You know, even before she started, before she started being Kylie, you know, with all the plastic surgery, beautiful Kylie, before all that stuff, she really just hung with a few friends. It was usually I was her and Jordan. I know she was cool with Stasia for years. Um, her and Jaden Smith were always cool. She always kind of hung in her circle. Same with Kendall. She kind of hung in her circle. Courtney hung in her circle. Chloe definitely was on some clout chaser shit. Going from like hanging out with Trina and certain people. So you have some of them who were clout chasing and hanging with different people trying to be seen and noticed. But for the most part, most of them, they really didn't. They kind of just hung with each other as family. So I see a lot of people trying to blame Kylie and say that, oh, this is Kylie. Kylie did something. Kylie had nothing to do with that. She was at home living her best life. And they got into some type of argument or altercation. But again, that's why I'm saying that, you know, people have to pick and choose, you know, who they bring into their circle. Because now, again, Kylie allowing them into her house, her name is being attached to this whole situation when she wasn't in the car and this had nothing to do with her. So I bet you the next time she's going to think twice before allowing certain people into her vicinity. So we have to be careful with that. You know, your energy is precious. Your body is precious. There's only one you. Like we were talking about at the beginning of the stream. You have one body. And you have to protect it at all costs. So you have to be mindful of the people that you're around and the situations that you find yourselves in. Um, Let's see here. Simone Douglas Shepard says, I'm starting to think that Meg was drunk and playing around with the gun and accidentally went off. Thank you so much for the $49.99 Super Chat. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we'll never know until more more comes out and it's going to be interesting i definitely want to hear tory's side as well is he going to admit to you know it was an accidental shooting the gun went off or was it a situation where they were both you know playing with it and you know something happened you know so it's going to be interesting um shiandra says also drinking tampers with your spiritual compass that's why may just can't drink around everybody I hope she truly learns and heals. Love you, T. Love you, too. And that's a really good point. Thank you so much. Um, let's see here. 
Marlon uh, Harrison sends 20. He says, T, you sound just like my grandpa who used to say, not everyone is your friend. Amen. Your grandpa was speaking some wise truths. It's the truth. Not everybody is your friend and not everybody, you know what I'm saying, wants the best for you. That's why I always tell people, be mindful of who you share your dreams, your goals, and your secrets with. You know, and that's why I don't accept prayer from any and everybody. Because, again, you don't know if folks are truly praying for you and praying good things for you or praying on you. So those are things that you have to be, you know, be mindful of. And again, that's discernment. You can't tell everybody your hopes and dreams because everybody don't want to see you grow and elevate. So, yeah. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Maya Maya Love, I like that name, says, I love and appreciate you. I want to let you know that you're not a weirdo, which he says, which you say makes a plethora of sense. Don't let these real weirdos get you down. Please keep me in mind when you make your private stream. You wanted to... Um, I love you. Wanted to say that this last stream. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that super chat. That means a lot to me. And yeah, I try not to like, you know, let people's words get to me. But you know, I'm human. So sometimes I'll be like, well, shit, maybe I am a damn weirdo. But usually when I post it, there's at least, you know, at least a handful of people who agree with the, what I'm posting. So that makes me happy. Like, okay, maybe I'm not the lone weirdo on Instagram, you know. But thank you so much. Uh, Dominique says, hey, T, love your content. I thank Meg losing her mom. Took a major toll on her mental. I lost my mother last year and wanted to be surrounded by people instead of taking my alone time to heal. Thank you so much for that comment. I'm sorry for the loss of your mother. And that might be true, too. That's a really good point. You know, sometimes when we lose people close to us, you know, you don't want to be by yourself. And I think they said she also lost her father, so she doesn't really have a parent. So maybe she's looking at all these people to be like, you know, surrogate parents for her. You know, who knows? But thank you so much for the super chat and thanks for coming through. Um, let's see here. Aquamoon sent 10. She says, I'm an Aquarius, as an Aquarius myself, like Meg, I'm surprised her discernment isn't better. We tend to attract all good and bad energies due to our free spirit and nonchalant attitudes. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, Fadomo. Fatomo A says, I agree with you, T. Meg needs to protect herself and not Shady Daystar. I love you. <laughs> his name is so funny to me. I like it, though. Daystar. It's very unique. And then they said his daddy's name is Sunstar. Very, very unique names. Very unique. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Malay says, the situation sounds like a drunk couple getting into an argument. And Tory Lanez put the gun to scare and the gun went off by accident. It could possibly be. It's going to be very interesting to see how everything plays out. It could definitely possibly be. Um, Bernita Foss says the older sisters, except Courtney, was chasing fame. Exactly. So, you know, like I said, I just hope that with all this, you know, she takes it as a lesson learned. And she realizes that life is precious, you know, and, and you got to watch your energy. You got to watch the things that you put out there, you know. And um, if Tory Lanez is guilty of this, don't protect him. You don't owe him shit, period. You know, if the shoe was on the other foot, they'd have no problem throwing you under the bus if you pulled out a gun and shot at him. Like, she's a crazy bitch. Lock her up, you know. So I don't think she needs to protect him at all. Whoever did that to you could have took your life. So definitely tell your story, you know what I'm saying, and be your own advocate. At the end of the day, you don't owe him anything. Um, let's see here. I get I get why Tori would have a gun. Look what they did to Pop Smoke. Yeah, the whole story is crazy. People need to get like Beyonce. I think Jada's career as a talk show host is over. I feel like it ruined her career. No one is going to take her seriously anymore. She was on top to be the next Oprah, but she ruined her bag. I don't think she was on top to be the next Oprah. It's not reach. But I think that her show, people are not going to take it as seriously anymore. So she, I mean, maybe she talks about other topics, but as far as relationship stuff, she can miss me with the bullshit. I would never take Jada, yeah, relationship advice from Jada Pinkett Smith, ever. <laughs> Let me see here. Um, Bridget Gibbs says, thank you for telling young ladies to tell anyone about abuse. Love you, girl. 
always a real person. I'm here for it. Amen and thank you. And shout out to all the new members that are joining the membership. Yeah, I'm always going to keep it real. Like, you know what I'm saying? We, we can't say that black women are not protected. You know what I'm saying? But then in the same breath, don't encourage young girls to get out there and tell the, their story and tell their truth. You know what I'm saying? Abuse is not okay. And you have to speak up. No one is going to know to protect you if they don't know what's going on. And like I said, the story is so convoluted and mixed up. At this point, I'm just waiting for everything to come out in the wash. Because between what the sister said, the mother said, then how they were forced to go private and delete stuff, something is going on. Something is not cleaning the buttermilk. Um, name Nun says, hey T, I've been watching you since 09 back in high school. You're an amazing inspiration as someone who will be in the music industry. You show me that consistency and independent is key to not co-signing fake relationships. Keep going. Thank you so much, and thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's the truth. It's the truth. So now we talked about the whole... I've been on here for an hour and 10 minutes, honey. It don't even feel like it, honestly. Um, So we talked about the Meg Thee Stallion theme. I want to talk about... um. The Nick Cannon situation, okay? And I'm not going to go too deep with it. I'm just going to hit on a few points. So as we all know, Nick Cannon. Let's see. Let me read this super chat from my sis, Melanie Queen. says, love you, T. You've got me through a lot of strenuous, sad times. Thank you for being you and bringing us a little laughter during these difficult times. Love your spirit, sis. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thanks for coming through. Appreciate you. Um... So with the whole thing with Nick Cannon, Nick Cannon got in trouble for saying um, what a lot of people deem to be anti-Semitic. Um, right now, you can't find the interviews on YouTube. I don't know if Nick Cannon took them down or if YouTube deleted them. I'm not sure. But he was saying a lot of stuff in that interview, like, um, you know, people who lack melanin, white people, you know, they're subhuman, they lack emotions. He made a lot of, blank, you know, blanketed statements, and it bothered a lot of people, okay? Um, and so there's a segment of the black population who feel like, you know, he spoke nothing but the truth. Uh, black folks are the real Jews. He spoke truth to power. And then you have a segment of the population who's just like, we're just sitting back sipping tea, like, And watching how this shit plays out. And the reason why I feel like that is this. Um, let me see here. The reason why I feel like that is basically when it's all said and done. Now, let me explain something to you. Anybody come into my chat to bring up shit about Treacy, you'll be blocked off my stream. If you have an issue with this woman, take that shit to her page. We're having real discussions right now. So thank you for your super chat. You're blocked. I keep telling y'all, quit mentioning other YouTubers in my stream. If you have issues with them, take your ass to their page and you go rant and raid over there. So anybody else mentioning somebody that has nothing to do with my stream, you're blocked off my channel. So thanks for the money. So anyways, y'all... Um, where's my, okay, talking about Nick Cannon. I just, I can't, I can't stand messy people. So the whole Nick Cannon situation, he said a lot of disparaging things. So a lot of us were just, you know, sitting back. Now I had a lot of people hitting me up like, oh, you need to talk about this. And, oh, we need to all have his back. I don't, I ain't got to talk about shit. This is not, sorry, once again, this is not black women's fight. It's not my job as a black woman to come with a cape to come, have Nick Cannon's back, uh, you know, against some shit that came out his mouth, okay? The people who need to come and have his back is the woke community who he's trying to appeal to and, and his rapper friends. They should be the one coming to, you know, with capes. Where's T.I.? Why is T.I., you know, Mr. Woke, why is he not speaking out and having his homeboys back? They're in the industry together. Where's all the conscious folks on YouTube? They should have been coming out having his back. This, this isn't, you know, this, this has nothing to do with me or other black women. He chose to make those comments, you know, agree or disagree. He chose to make them. And this is why I say that at the end of the day, you need to, you, you need to talk. If you're going to talk about certain things, it needs to make sense. And you need to be able to stand in whatever you're trying to talk about. Did my stream just go out? Hold on. Hold up now. 
Is my stream working? I'm, I mean, damn, we're talking about Nick Cannon and the stream is acting funny. Like, what the hell? Anyways, I'm going to keep going because, like I said, I'm also recording this on my OBS. So we can, we're going to keep streaming and going. But, you know, my whole thing is I feel like this. I feel like Nick Cannon is really conflicted. Okay? Now, let me say this. Nick Cannon has done a lot in the community. So I'm never going to take that from him. He has done a lot. He's been on the front lines in a lot of different situations. So I'm never going to act like, oh, Nick doesn't do anything. He just talks on social media. No, Nick has done a lot in the community, okay? But my thing is he needs to, he, he's very conflicted. I think the problem with Nick is this. He's tired of the black community not taking him seriously and not seeing him on the same level as certain, as, as certain other entertainers. For the most part in the black community, as far as like, you know, social media is concerned and things like that, they look at Nick Cannon as like, just like kind of like a goofball type persona. Like we know he gets money. We know he's had hit shows, but they don't give him the same level of respect like they do like a Nas or a KRS-One or, you know, I don't, just whatever rapper you want to name, right? And I think that that really bothers him. And I think that for him... He felt like he could get more respect by going the woke route, okay? We all knew him more as the comedian, the guy from Wild and Out and all these, you know, movies and, you know, Mariah Carey's ex-husband, things like that. But over the past few years, he started going more the woke route. And that's fine. But my thing is, if you're going to speak on certain things, you need to speak clearly and you need to stand in your shit and it needs to make sense. It was a lot of pausing, a lot of, um, you could tell like he, he didn't have his thoughts together and you can't go that deep by painting a community of people with one brush and not have your thoughts together. And then I also feel like because he was on the platform with Professor Griff and we all know Professor Griff was accused years ago of, you know, anti-Semitism and that's kind of what ruined, you know, public enemy. I feel like that also didn't help either. But I knew the apologies would be coming. I think what it was, initially he was standing 10 toes down. He was going in. He was going off. Let me pull up some of the stuff that we posted on Instagram here. When everything first went down. He was very, you know, he was standing in his shit initially. And then once his money started getting affected, that whole tune switched up. Then, you know, apologies were being issued once Viacom was like, no, we're not having this. So let me go ahead and um, I want to see what's safe to read here. Okay, so basically Viacom was issuing a statement and they said that they're not going to, you know, they condemn bigotry and all that stuff. And so he lost his relationship. But what was very interesting, what a lot of us learned is that Nick Cannon didn't even own Wildin' Out. He didn't own any of these shows. He has helped to make Viacom a billion-dollar business. Bought them ideas, you know, helped start the careers of many people, and he has no ownership in this. So they could just basically take him out that easily. And so he started demanding that Viacom give him ownership. You can't demand once you're in a situation after the fact. This is somebody who's supposed to be woke and conscious. Why don't you own a percentage of any of this? Why are you pitching shows to them and you're not the owners of the show? It, it just, it really, I was really confused. Because I, I really thought that he owned Wild and Out. This is a brand that's been out for damn near 15 years. And he owns no stake in it. He said on his Facebook post that he was swindled out of it. So if you were swindled out of it, why did you not cause, you know, a, a ruckus and, and, and an uproar long before this? Because, again, a lot of people are comfortable being the face of a brand, but not really having any true ownership. And I think that was the sad part in all this, because I really thought that he owned all that stuff. Where it's like, you know, he was so comfortable saying it because they couldn't affect his paper, only to find out that they could very much affect his paper. Now, NBC is, or is it Fox? It might be Fox. They're talking about keeping him. 
as the mass singer because they're trying to have him, you know, grow and learn from his experience, which is fine. And he sent out a wholehearted apology. And let me find out his, let me uh, pull up his apology here. Just a second here. Yeah, he had like just a list of demands. It was like, it's just been the strangest situation. So this was the other day um, when they fired him. He was upset. I mean, he had a whole list of demands. It was it was just insane to find out that he didn't own any of this stuff. And, you know, he said that he's deeply saddened. The company misused an important moment for all of us to grow closer and come together to learn. And they're using him as an example, as an outspoken black man. And he vows to not be bullied or silenced. Says Viacom does not understand or respect the power of the black community. Um, and I think he felt like the black community was going to stand behind him more. So then what happened is that, let me see, the next day, here it is. He came out and he apologized. So a day ago, he came, he came out and he apologized to the Jewish community. And he released a statement. I'm just going to skim. But basically, he basic, he says, first and foremost, I extend my deepest, most sincere apology to my Jewish sisters and brothers for the hurtful and divisive words that came out of my mouth during my interview with Richard Griffin. They reinforced the worst stereotype of a proud and magnificent people. And I feel ashamed of the uninformed, uh, naive place that these words came from. The video of this interview has since been removed. While the Jewish experience encompasses more than 5,000 years, there's so much that I have yet to learn. I've had the least, hold on, I've had at least a minor history lesson over the past few days. And to say that it's an eye-opening experience would be a vast understatement. So that was just some of his apology. And then when you went to his page, everything was deleted besides that apology and some stuff to Breonna Taylor. So then, um... Today, because I took a break yesterday from social media, then I see where he goes off on the black community. And so, first of all, he made his tagline heaven, okay? So he says that he's in heaven. And then he says, I hurt an entire community, and it pained me to my core. I thought it couldn't get any worse. Then I watched my own community turn on me, call me a sellout for apologizing, good night, enjoy earth, then he comes back and he says, y'all can have this planet, I'm out. So that bothered me. I don't like people trying to, you know, use their situation to shame other people. You put yourself in that position. So I, I didn't like that. Now you want to blame the black community? Let me come back on screen. My issue with that is this. When I went to his comment section of that apology, honestly, and you know, I, I read comments. There wasn't bashing. I'm not saying he wasn't getting knocked by some people, but most of it was saying, no, Nick, don't apologize. You said what you said, brother. We stand by you. It was a lot more positive than I personally saw. Maybe more of the negative came later, but when I first saw it, most of the top comments was, brother, you have nothing to apologize about. You were speaking your truth. Maybe in the shade room comments, it might have been a little bit different. But how do all of a sudden you're upset at the black community and you feel like the black community threw you under the bus? Uh-uh. We're not going to do that. You, you, these were your words. The black community didn't, you, didn't put you up to this to, to say the words that came out of your mouth. You chose to have a discussion about the Jewish community. You chose to say that people who don't have melanin were subhuman and, and all this stuff. Which to me is very interesting because, again, Mariah Carey's very, you know, she's racially ambiguous. Her mom is white. So does that, so it, it are all people who are not related to you, who are not, you know, Mariah Carey's family. So everybody else that doesn't have melanin, they're subhuman except for Mariah Carey's family. That doesn't, that's a blanket statement. And I mean, just think about it. How many people have, how many Karens have been fired from their jobs for saying discriminatory things, racist things, going on nasty rants, and folks get up in arm, they call their jobs, they get folks fired? What did y'all think was going to happen? He basically said the same thing 
Because first, the the because okay, let me break this down. It was two different days, so this was not all in the same interview with Professor Griff. Okay, so the first one he had said some stuff about the Jewish community, and I remember he was trending. Then it was like a day or two later is when he did the interview with Professor Griff. He was trending again. But when he was also saying stuff about, you know, lack of melanin and subhuman and not having emotions and stuff like that, that is a blanketed statement. If somebody has said the same thing about black people, which they have said in the past, we would have seen that as racist. So that is where the up in arms came from. And a lot of people were using that point like, well, all these Karens are getting fired and losing their job. He should be no different. And when I was seeing how folks were going in on Twitter and adding Viacom and adding the mass Singer and NBC and Fox and all his gigs, I said, there's going to be some shit in the mix. I think because so many things that he's done back to back in less than a week, they're going to be coming for his head. And they did. And once he's seen that his celebrity friends and many in the industry were quiet and he was out there on that ledge by himself, I think that's what's really bothering him because he thought it was going to spearhead a bunch of people to come and, you know, boycott Viacon and, you know, have his back. And really, it was crickets. And I don't think that it was really regular people, you know, like me or y'all. It wasn't our job to get involved in that. This is some celebrity shit. Let the celebrities help. Let, let the Walt crew help. That's who he was gearing that towards. And they were quiet. And I think that's the part for me is why he's really upset. Um, let's see here. Okay, so I heard that too, um, Mel Melanin Girl Hustle. She said the video was from last year. Exactly. So I feel like in a way, he was also posting stuff to poke. He kept poking the bear. Because every time he was trending all this week, earlier this week and last week, it was for like anti-Semitism, accused racism and all that stuff. And he kept poking the bear. And eventually the bear swung back. And that's the thing is... When you have things to lose, you have to decide. Is it worth losing everything? Is it worth losing certain things and certain brands to try and get a point across? If you have nothing to lose and that's what you feel wholeheart wholeheartedly, then you have to stand in that. You can't be strong and say that they're trying to silence a black man and they're trying to take the black man down. And then as soon as these deals start being taken off the table, your talk show being taken away, and you don't know when you'll do your radio show, and now they're taking wilding out from you. Now it's, okay, well, now I want to apologize. Now I want to learn more from this community. Like, it, it just comes off as crazy to people, you know? And then for him to have all that energy towards the black community yesterday and go off and say that it's the black community bringing him down, absolutely not. You better address your celebrity friends like 50 Cent. He was the one in the shade room clowning you and talking mess. Why Why does the black community all of a sudden, you know, why are we getting berated? Because you're mad at 50 Cent. That's what it boils down to. 50 Cent clowns you. That's celebrity. That has nothing to do with the entire black community because regular, a lot of regular black men and women were standing with Nick and were, you know, sending him words of encouragement. And it also goes to show you, good, thank you, uh, Brenda, she brought up Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade was another one who backpedaled and pussy popped. Oh, he was so strong on Twitter until he realized his money might be fucked up. If y'all don't remember, I had posted this on Instagram about D. Wade. Once again, being messy, trying to involve himself, looking for attention. He got the attention he was looking for. So Dwayne Wade went on and he posted this. He said, at Nick Cannon, we are with you. Keep leading. Black power fist. <laughs> grand opening, grand closing. He posted this at 1256. Honey, by 432, he was singing a whole new song and dance. All of a sudden, here comes a tiny violin. Dear, near, 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 near. I want to clarify my now deleted tweets. I was not supporting or condoning what Nick Cannon specifically said, but I had expressed my support of him owning the content and brand that he helped to create. <laughs> Shut your ass up. 
D Wade. How you gonna just retweet and say something, but now all of a sudden you didn't know what was said. You had no idea. See no evil, hear no evil. I was just trying to support his brand. I didn't know he had disrespected, you know, a whole community. You knew your ass was trying to jump into some shit and you didn't think folks was gonna hold you to task and start tagging the NBA and start tagging your sponsors. Once his money was being affected, Oh, he 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 backtracked like Michael Jackson moonwalking, honey. Annie, is you okay? Are you okay, Annie? <laughs> You've been hit by do, do, do. You've been hit by a smooth criminal. Ew. <laughs> so I think <laughs> So I think with that, Nick realized he was out there by himself. Even D Wade tried to show him a little bit of support. And he, he put that fist right back down. He put that he put that black fire fist right back in his pocket. It was like, oh, oh, oh no, that wasn't what I was trying to say. Oh, that was Dragon D. Them white folks, honey, white Twitter came for D Wade. Came for him. You know, so like I said, you, you gotta watch. You know who you're trying to support and who you're trying to align yourself with. We're living a day and age, like I told y'all earlier in the stream, folks don't care about that celebrity shit. That celebrity stuff is out the window. Times is hard for everybody. People are agitated. People are mad. There's the uh, second wave is coming. Folks are stuck in the house. So they got time. They got time to dig up old tweets and, you know what I'm saying, contact, you know, sponsors 50 times a day. I mean, the, the whole country, it, it's, it's, a, it's a powder keg right now ready to blow. The racial divide in this country is so deep right now, and it's so sensitive. You have to watch stuff. Your brand will be affected. And if you cannot afford to take that hit, you might want to just be quiet. Every You know, like I said, people have conversations all the time. Certain things are tabletop conversations that you have behind closed doors with your peoples. Everything does not need to be brought to social media. Everything does not need to be discussed on a podcast. You have to move smart. And he thought he had built enough generational wealth and that he was cool enough with Viacom where he could say whatever he wanted to say, but he found out pretty quickly, no, you can't. You just can't. And we can't make blanketed statements about people. I don't like when it's done to black people. So how can I co-sign a blanketed statement, you know, being made about other races? You just can't do it. And I think he's upset because he's finding himself out on a ledge. But then you can't shame the black community because you're upset. It had nothing to do with us. Let me read some of these super chats. Uh, let's see here. Uh, De uh, Dequatia. I like that. Dequatia Graham says his wilding out cast. We're kind of supporting him. I didn't see all of the tweets. I did see Jason Lee was probably one of the few that I did see coming out and having his back. I don't know about the other ones. Maybe they were, but I know Jason Lee was. Thank you for the super chat, sis. Um, Lace Will says, Nick blaming the black community and ain't, put and ain't put a grocery store in his hometown of Southeast San Diego and has, and has San Diego tatted on his back. Thank you so much for the super chat, sis. I appreciate it. Angel Lewis says, watching Lovely Tea is better than watching TV. LOL, love you. I love you too. Thank you for joining me today. Appreciate it. Um, oh, Sola de like it? I hopefully I pronounced it right. Says, you're like my auntie in my head. You always keep telling the truth. I'll be emailing you for some advice because I could really use it. Thank you so much and thanks for the super chat. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming through. Um, Jarvis Miller says, love you, T. Keep doing you. Definitely will. Thank you, Jarvis. Um, Malay says, Nick Cannon should put more energy into his YouTube channel and build his independent brand. Um, Dre Vocal says, late to the chat. Sorry if you went over this, but Daystar is connected to Lucifer in the Bible. Heavy esoterical meaning. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, Aaron Barnwell says, now be Simone. Needs that nine to five. Thank you so much for the fifty dollars super chat. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming through. Um, Aaliyah Janess says, "This is what happens when celebs want to do podcasts. You have to have a gift for this kind of work. Stay in your lane. Remember Trina. 
Amen. Thank you for bringing that up. That is true. And I've been saying this from day one. People are trying to do too much. You got folks trying to do lanes that are just not their lane. And their brand was meant to be a certain way. And if your brand is supposed to be more, you know, family friendly, kid friendly, more goofy, you, you can't in, in, in one essence be this way on television and for the major networks, but then on your YouTube pro podcast, you're Mr. Woke, you know, pro black, the white, the white man is the devil. That, that just doesn't work. You have to decide which lane you want to be in. And that's why a lot of these celebrities are finding themselves in hot water because now they all want to do commentary, but they don't realize that with commentary, you have to be able to stand in your shit. There's backlash that comes with commentary, and a lot of people can't handle it. That's why I even said in my, my previous stream, you got a lot of these weirdos who want to start podcasts and YouTube channels, and you know, they want to give opinions about everything under the sun, but the second somebody has a, a minuscule critique or, an, uh, critique or an opinion about them, they lose it. They go crazy. They're upset. You know, you're everything but a child of God. That's how you can always tell the folks who aren't built for this shit because they just sit and cry anytime they're, at, you know, they're the topic at hand. How many times have I been drugged? I don't give a fuck. Say what the hell I said. That's part of being a commentator. Everybody's not going to agree with you, but once the words come out of your mouth, you have to hold, you know what I'm saying? You got to take responsibility for the words that come out of your mouth. And if you're not ready for that, then you shouldn't be doing commentary. You shouldn't be podcasting. You shouldn't be so opinionated because you have to be able to stand in your shit, period. And that, that's just what it is. Everybody can't do that. And if you're more comfortable being aligned with a safe brand, then you might just want to stick to, you know, being a safe brand and get your money that way. If you're more comfortable being controversial, then that's fine. Stand in your shit. If you want to be a hoe on OnlyFans, showing your ass, that's fine. Just stay in your shit. But you can't be on OnlyFans naked and everybody can see everything, you know, you know, everything under the sun. But then... We're all supposed to see you on television as family friendly and safe. It doesn't work that way. And a lot of people, you know, they, they don't know. They don't know how to balance that. They don't want to choose. They're conflicted. And I think that is the issue with Nick is that he wants to be seen like a Lord Jamar who can say whatever he wants to say. And Lord Jamar stands in his shit. Professor Griff stands in his shit. Nick is a brand. So you don't have that luxury. And at this point, he needs to decide what he wants to do because right now, you know, Viacom and these white companies, they're not checking for him. Because, again, the, the celebrity thing, that's null and void. Anybody can be a celebrity nowadays. They can easily replace Nick with somebody like a Terry Crews who's safe and who's going to walk the line and do, you know, and, and not ruffle any feathers. So that's what he needs to decide. Maybe at this point he needs to just go independent and say, well, F it. Since I'm losing everything and, you know, they're dropping me from this and that, let me go create my own Wild and Out show online. Let me go create this. He has enough connects in the industry. He has enough money. So maybe this is a time and maybe this is what he needed to go independent. And if he's not willing to do that, then that says a lot right there. So that was a really good comment. Thank you so much. Um, let's see here. De uh, uh, Deidre Robin says, love you, T. I have to, I have to go. To warn, oh, I have to go to work now. Catch the rest later. Definitely, thanks for coming through. I appreciate it. Thank you. Let's see here. Um, 2020 has been a year. You have to pick a side. Um, let's see. We have over 14,000 people in here. That's what's up. I've been on here for an hour and 38 minutes. So, yes, I'm going to go ahead and get off. It's already almost 9 o'clock. I didn't even know I've been on here that long. But I want to just thank everybody who just came through today. And, you know, we just had, a, I mean, so much good dialogue. I always like going back and, you know, read, looking at the comments and, you know, reading stuff like that and seeing what people have to say because I missed some things. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, I just think, you know, at this point, you know, I wish him the best. I don't, you know, I don't find any joy in him losing stuff because he worked hard for that. Nick Cannon has been around since, you know, we were kids. He's worked, he's worked very hard. I would never let anybody take that from Nick. He's worked hard. He's put in the work, especially from what he comes from. You know, his mother was a teen mom. His father was a gangbanger, one of the biggest bloods in San Diego. So he could have went many different routes and he chose a, a good route. He was blessed to go down that route. So I'm sad that he's losing this stuff. But, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be blamed, 
you know, when he says the black community and black folk, I'm not going to be blamed for the fuckery now. You got to own your own shit. That came out your mouth and nobody told you to have those conversations. But um, I will never take that from Nick. He has done things for the community. He is a hard worker. He's put in work. And I hope that he takes this situation as a lesson learned and he really starts investing in ownership and trying to build his own brand away from having to depend on the Viacoms and the CBSs and the Foxes. You know what I'm saying? So that's that. That's probably going to have to be the next step for him is going independent. You know, and unfortunately his words and the things that happened over the past few days, that's going to be affecting a lot of those people on the cast. Again, be Simone, you know, being very arrogant a few months ago. Oh, I can't have a nine to five person. I'm doing this and I'm, you know, I'm manifesting that. Anything can happen. Now the show that most people know you for is gone. So like I always tell people, being humble takes you a long way. You never know your situation. Nothing is guaranteed. I don't care if it's online work. I don't care if it's a regular nine to five. Nothing is guaranteed, especially in this 2020. So be grateful for whatever position you're in and be humble. Because you can wake up one day and it's gone. Folks were telling me that they were literally watching the premiere episode, you know, the new episode of Wild and Out. And, li- and this is how messy these networks are. They said that, you know, they could hear the trailer come on and then it just switched to Fresh Prince. So that's how quick they just, they cut it off. They just switched to Fresh Prince in the middle of the broadcast. It's crazy. So, you guys, on that note, I am out. Um, let me read these last few super chats, and then I'm out. Um, Antoinette Ch- uh, Chanel says, "Lovely T is speaking the truth. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super set, uh, the super chat, sis. I appreciate it." Um, let's see here. Lexi sent 1999. Thank you so much, Lexi. Thank you for coming through. So you guys, once again, thank you guys. Make sure you guys like this stream. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope I kept you entertained for the past almost two hours. Happy Friday, and I will try and come back on um, Sunday with another stream. Hopefully there'll be more information, more of an update with all these stories from Meg to Nick Cannon to Tamar. I hope Tamar ends up being okay. You know, I hope all that works out for her. So I'll see you guys again. Thanks once again for joining me this evening. Bye.